All right. All right. God loves me. I believe he does. Sometimes I doubt it. See, it's been, it's been really rough. There's been some wonderful moments, but it's been really rough the past, uh, I would say in particular, maybe the past six months. And one of my lowest, it's one of my lowest moments in the past four or five months. I got a text message. And this is what it says. It says, throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Uh, that's 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58 in the message. And below that it says, saw this verse this morning and thought of you. My response was, thank you, I needed that today. And the person wrote, you exemplify this verse, be encouraged. I really want to tell you who sent this. Knowing her, she probably wouldn't want me to say, but I think it's important that you know. This text message came to me from Major, Major Smith, Major Kim Smith. What she did not know, it was that at that very moment, I wanted to give up because I just, it was overwhelming. Right after that, I got a call. I got a call from Bill, Bill Rollins, who just, he just, hey, hey man, how you doing? I just want to check on you, see if everything's okay. A few minutes late, well, not a few minutes later, but later that day, I got a text message from Lorena, or, or, or uh, a social service manager. She said, Neil, I, I was thinking about you, and I just wanted to encourage you. Now, mind you, I've been going through a lot, as, and I, I didn't say anything. I said nothing to these people. Now, these aren't people that usually talk to each other. But in that moment, in that moment, I was encouraged. And I was reminded that the immense love that God has for me, he wanted me to know that he loves me and he cares. That's some deep love. On top of that, I got, a, I got a call from Drew. Hey, I just wanted to, Drew Forrest, I just want to check in and see how you're going. I got a text message all the way from Ohio, from Captain Durrell. Hey, I just, you know, I just want to check in and see how you're doing. In the span of about two weeks, almost every day, I got a call or a text message from someone saying, hey, you're on my mind. I just wanted to pray with you. I want to encourage you. That's God's love. Importantly, that was people acting upon something. Something moved them to call and they acted upon it. See, a part of my frustration is that there are certain things that I'm limited in what I can do. And it feels frustrating when you can't. Can you relate to that? Is there something that you feel like you want to do, but whatever reason, something is stopping you from doing it. That can be so frustrating. Do you feel at times undervalued? Like your words mean nothing. Sometimes you hear people say, well, you really shouldn't be here. Or stay out, this is not your lane. But what drives, what drives us for people in this situation is our love, our love and deep passion for our community that we serve. And it's frustrating when we're trying to serve a community, we're trying to help our brothers and sisters, but we're fighting our own battles at home. One of the most heartbreaking things I heard was from my daughter. She said, and she didn't tell me, um, she tries to put on a, a good face. She said to, to, to my wife, Lisa, she said, Mom, she said, Mom, I am, I'm trying to be happy. I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to be happy. But it's hard sometimes. When Lisa told me, I just, it just broke. Something inside me broke. I'm trying to be a hero at home. And my child is still suffering. She's still hurting. I know, because I've heard, I know there are many of you out there who've heard similar situations from your children, from your community, from your church. 
they are hurting and they want to feel that love. And sometimes it feels like what we're doing is not enough. This morning, on my way, I'm going to show you how much God loves me, man. On my way to do this, my sister, Jessie, uh, uh, she's our food service manager, wonderful chef. She pulled me aside this morning. She said, Neil, she put her hand right here. She said, Neil, you've been on my mind all night, and I wanted to pray for you today. I want to encourage you. God loves you. Outside of this Christian faith, we can say, oh, these are, just, these are just coincidence. It's not a coincidence. For those of us who believe that God loves us, this is not a coincidence. So if you're out there, for those of you watching or listening, this story is my story. You might have similar stories. I encourage you, tell someone, pick up the phone, call someone. Let them know that you're thinking about them. Let them know that you care for them. Let them know that they're valued. Let them know that there's a God who loves them, who will fight for them, who will continue to fight no matter what. As we get ready to go into, you know, the period of Lent, he loved us so much that he went to a cross for us. He died. The, the punishment... The punishment that he endured on his way to the cross, no human being could survive that. And he took that for us. These are the ways, this is the way in which he reminded me that he loves me and he cares. So I encourage you today. There's a God who loves and cares. And he wants the best for us. And we might doubt him at times. We might think that, nah, he's forgotten about us. Remember what happened to me. Remember, at least 10 people in the span of two weeks who don't usually talk to each other, all called or text or sent a card. I got a card from North Carolina. A pastor's luck just to encourage Yearwoods in New York just to remind me or let me know that there's a God who loves me. And that's how God showed me and shows me on a daily basis, even this morning, that he loves me and he cares for me. Don't give up. God is fighting for you because he loves you. God bless you.